Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, books about Japanese swords. So whether you're a bladesmith or a knife collector or a martial artist, the best way to educate yourself about Japanese swords is to lay your hands on as many high quality blades as you can. To this end, you know, buying good blades, joining uh, sword collecting organizations, and attending museums and sword shows are all great ways of acquainting yourself with Japanese swords. But you also need to read. Uh, the unfortunate thing about being interested in Japanese swords if you live outside of Japan is that, you know, unless you're in a really, really major city, it's hard to see lots of high quality swords close up. So reading is really, really critical if you want to gain a high level of knowledge about Japanese swords. So what I'll be doing today is going over a list of useful books in English. We're going to start with very general uh, introductory kind of books and then we'll move to some of the more, um, you know, connoisseur level um, complicated kind of books um, and uh, some that are kind of in between. So uh, hopefully this will give you kind of a program of study if you really want to go out there and uh, up your game in terms of your knowledge of Japanese swords. All right, let's launch into it. Basically, the list starts with the more readily available reference books, then moves toward more narrowly focused, expensive, and harder to find titles. This is by no means a complete list, but it's enough to keep you broke for quite a while. I'm not going to tell you this is every book ever written, it's just a survey of books I've personally read and found useful. So, let's start with general interest type books. First, I'll mention an affordable starting place and one of the first books available in the U.S. after World War II. John Yamoto's book, The Samurai Sword, is short and sweet and a nice little survey. Not deep, and the illustrations are showing their age, but a little of everything and a good place to start. Another decent intro book is Facts and Fundamentals of Japanese Swords by Nobuo Nakahara. To me, it feels sort of like it was assembled from a bunch of disparate pieces rather than written in one coherent throw, but that's just my take. Could be wrong. The information here is still good. Another good starter is Kanzan Sato's book, The Japanese Sword. I don't have a picture of it because I loaned it to a guy and he never gave it back. While not especially deep, it's one of the most comprehensive books out there in terms of laying out the basics of Japanese sword construction, history, anatomy, and connoisseurship fundamentals. Next, hands down the best book written about how Japanese swords, as well as their fittings and furniture, are made, is The Craft of the Japanese Sword by the eminent swordsmith Yoshindo Yoshihara and his writing partners Leon and Hiroko Cap. One of the difficulties of entering the world of Japanese swords is that there's an enormous amount of mythologization, misunderstanding, and plain old BS pervade as truth by sword enthusiasts. But, as befits a book written by a craftsman, this is a very clear-eyed, plain, no-nonsense book. If you only read one book about Japanese swords in your life, this should be the one. The same crew of authors also wrote The Art of the Japanese Sword, The Craft of Sword Making, and Its Appreciation. While this is an excellent book, you definitely want to buy their first book first. So I'll introduce Kokan Nagayama's The Connoisseur's Book of Japanese Swords by talking a little bit about the culture of Japanese sword collecting and connoisseurship. And those are not necessarily exactly the same thing. One of the difficulties of collecting anything made a long time ago is that you can't talk to the guys who made the thing, and so any attempt to understand the work starts with picking it up and looking at it and then trying to figure out what it is, who made it, where it was made, and when it was made. If you want, you can turn this process into a sort of sport. This sport, if you want to call it that, is known as Kante, identifying a tradition, a smith, a locale, time period, and so on by visually evaluating a blade. 
And because this sport begins and ends with the studying of physical appearance of the blades, in particular, what families of traits appear in the blades, it can become self-referential and self-fulfilling. This must be an X because everybody knows that an X has traits of Y, Z, A, and B. Now, in its best sense, connoisseurship is about developing deep appreciation of swords through relentless study and meticulous attention to detail. At its worst, it can be an exercise in pedantry and minutiae peddling. I'm not attacking the Conte approach to connoisseurship at all, I'm just saying it is what it is. Anyway, all of that said, if you want a good introduction to this approach to Japanese sword appreciation, then Kokan Nagayama's book is the best introduction in English. The drawback to this book is that it has precisely zero photographs of blades. There's a way to remedy this, though, which we'll talk about in a minute. Anyway, if you want to jump into connoisseurship, this is an excellent gateway. Let's turn to a number of other general books about Japanese swords. I run through these pretty quickly because they're all useful and all have some significant strengths and weaknesses. Kodansha Press has published a number of pretty good titles about modern swordsmiths, including the Yoshindo Yoshihara Cap Clans, Modern Japanese Swords and Swordsmiths, Tom Kishida's book about Yasukuni Shrine Swords, and Tsuchiko's book, The New Generation of Japanese Swordsmiths, among others. I find all these books useful because discussions by and about living, breathing swordsmiths tend to be less full of BS than books written about guys who died 800 years ago and therefore can't speak for themselves. Two London museums with superior collections of swords have also spawned books. Victor Harris's Cutting Edge, which I like both for its excellent photographs and for its clear-eyed textual descriptions, and Gregory Irvine's Japanese Sword, Soul of the Samurai, which includes many nice photographs of blades contained in the Victoria and Alberts collection. This returns me to a point I was making earlier, which is that many books, particularly more technical connoisseur-oriented books, don't include photographs and rely primarily on oshigata, that is, ink drawings, which don't necessarily reproduce all that well, which makes books with good photographs particularly treasured. This brings me to Walter Compton. Dr. Walter Compton was the president of a sizable pharmaceutical company, Miles Laboratories, and probably the West's most serious sword collector during the post-war period. Even back in the immediate post-war period, when he got started, collecting top quality blades was not a poor man's game. Now, with top swords sometimes bringing more than $100,000 a pop, it's more like a billionaire's game. In any case, Compton assembled a very judicious, carefully selected collection which serves as a sort of survey of the history of Japanese swords. After his death, his collection was sold at auction by Christie's. Christie's published two beautifully illustrated auction catalogs. If you can find them, they serve as great companion books to books like Nagiyama's The Connoisseur's Book of Japanese Swords. You can find descriptions of typical blades for a given smith, then look them up in the Compton books and figure out what they're talking about by looking at a photographically reproduced blade. Alternatives to laying out the hundreds and hundreds of dollars it'll cost you to get the Christie's catalogs are two humongous format books, also not cheap, 100 Masterpieces, which is also published by Christie's, and Nippon To Art Swords of Japan. Get all four books and you have enough sword porn for a lifetime. Of the two, 100 Masterpieces is by far the better illustrated. I joke about sword porn, but the fact is, the more you see, the more trained your eye becomes. Speaking of auction catalogs, once the sickness is really on you, you may want to start assembling a collection of auction catalogs. Many of these available, some good, some not so much. Art museum catalogs are also useful. Unfortunately, many of these are from Japanese museums. The Sano Art Museum in Japan, in particular, regularly curates fine sword shows with excellent catalogs, mainly in Japanese, sadly, but great pictures and usually enough English text to identify the makers of the blades and sometimes a little extra information. Now, of course, there's more to swords than just the blades. Sword polishing is an important subject because it takes at least as much competence on the part of the polisher as the smith to bring out the beauty in a Japanese sword. Here are a couple of titles. 
interested in sword fittings, one of the most beautifully illustrated books about any aspect of Japanese swords is Joe Earle's Lethal Elegance, a museum catalog type book drawn from the Boston Museum of Fine Arts superlative collection. If you're looking for general books about samurai culture with a certain amount of information about Japanese swords, Clive Sinclair and Stephen Turnbull have both done yeoman service. Not super technical, maybe some things that specialists and nitpickers might disagree with, but still worth reading. Finally, there are a ton of specialist books, mostly in Japanese, which are extremely technical in nature and contain technical descriptions of blades, generally accompanied by oshigata or ink illustrations, as we mentioned earlier. Now, some of these have been translated into English. The most massive of these that I'm aware of is the multi-volume Nihonto Koza, a book collaboratively written by several Japanese sword experts and translated by Harry Afu Watson. The Japanese Sword Society has published translations of other major sword titles like Sue Koto, Japanese Swords of the 15th and 16th centuries. There are a number of other translations of this type published in very small quantities. Anyway, I'll draw down the curtain here, but suffice it to say, you can spend a small fortune on Japanese sword books, study them pretty hard, and still feel like you're just scratching the surface of the subject. Consider yourself warned. Quick coda about these books. The ones published by mass market publishers can all be found through Amazon, and some of them at local bookstores. Some of the out-of-print ones can be found through a Libris, but most of the more specialized ones are thinner on the ground. You'll only find them from Japanese sword shows and specialty book dealers. As always, Google is your friend. Seek and ye shall find. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you can find more of my work. You'll also find plenty more videos there that you can't find on YouTube with very, very detailed information about all aspects of Japanese blade making. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades.